stay cool. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. This is space. There's space all over the place. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents Kepler, the planet finding fool of a telescope for the first time has caught the early flash of an exploding star. Okay, I haven't even read this article. It is from our buddies at NASA, and I am already laughing, crying, and dying on the inside. Why? Because this story is about how the Kepler Space Telescope has broke record and shattered science minds by capturing the early stage of a supernova. And a supernova is when a star, type 1, 2, or 3, or maybe it's 2 and 3, explode. Boom. Creating a giant shell of speeding interstellar dust. Now, why is it hilarious? Because at the top of the page, they're using an animation to show us. It's almost like saying, hey, dude, I caught the biggest trout fish ever in Lake Michigan. And I took video of it with my 4K DSLR Canon camera. I'd be like, kick ass. Can I see that footage? And the guy's like, no, but I will draw you a picture. You're like, uh, what? What the shit? What fancy game are you playing here, punk? Are you being a dickweed? Why can't we see the footage? Because you think like, my iPhone takes 60 frames of 4K. So you got a giant, super fancy space telescope taking pictures. How fast does it take pictures, man? Like one an hour, one a minute, one a second. I would like to know how many frames per second that thing shoots compared to frames NASA releases. And for the people who say, everything you know about space is fake, everything NASA says is fake. Well, maybe that's true. But how boring would that article be if I started every video like, hey, everything NASA says is fake, and then the video would be over. I guess, like Forrest Gump said, maybe it's a little bit of both. Maybe some of it's hogwash, some of it's real. Because NASA's like Hogwarts School of Wizardry and Witchcraft. They got good people, they got bad people, and they got other people who just want to get a diploma and then get a job and have a family. You know what I'm saying? So, choose your side and let's go. March 21st, 2016. Caught for the first time, the early flash of an exploding star. The brilliant flash of an exploding star's shockwave, what astronomers call the shock breakout, has been captured for the first time in the optical wavelength or visible wavelength by NASA's planet hunter, the Kepler Space Telescope. That thing is an exoplanet finding fool. They put that thing up, and now we're at over a thousand confirmed exoplanets. And yes, there's a giant asterisk behind that confirmation. And yes, I know it's hilarious that like the closest planet we found is always like 11 light years away or 11,000 light years away. It's like, hey, dude, you think you can find something closer? <laughs> yeah. It's like staying in Texas. Telling your buddy, hey, go find me a tree. And he's like, okay, I found you a tree in Africa. And you're like, what the shit? I don't get it. Am I off the base here? Sweet. Interesting fact. Of the confirmed planets, 4,706 are planet candidates. Which means they're big, they're round, and they've cleared their orbit. <laughs> That's a joke. I mean, it's real, but it's a joke. And 2,165 are eclipsing binaries. I wonder if we would count the moon and Earth as an eclipsing binary if we saw it from an another planet's. Kepler type telescope. You see that Kepler is searching for habitable planets because when they're done slave mining this one, they want to move on to the next. Or because we're destroying our planet so fast, we're going to need a new one soon. Treating this planet like a tampon. That's crazy, huh? Uh, I see facts. The Kepler was put up in 2009, and we've only got like three or four cameras pointed out towards space with all the cool stuff. We got like 17,000 satellites, cameras pointed at Earth. That's really weird math, man. An international science team led by Peter Garnovich an astrophysics professor at the University of Notre Dame in India, in Indiana, analyzed light captured by Kepler every 30 minutes over a three-year period from 500 distant galaxies, searching some 50 trillion stars. They were hunting for signs of massive stellar death explosions, known as supernova. Takes a photograph once every 30 minutes. Wonderful. Okay, that means about 50 a day. Hey, kitty cat. You should string all these 5,000 photographs together and make a cool movie, man. I don't know, just an idea. In 2011, two of these massive stars called Red Supergiants exploded while in Kepler's view. The first behemoth, KSN 2011a, is nearly 300 times the size of our sun and a mere 700 million light years from Earth. 700 million light years from Earth, there you go. The second, KSN 2011d, is roughly 500 times the size of our sun and around 1.2 billion light years away. To put their size into perspective, Earth's orbit about our sun would fit comfortably within these colossal stars. Yeah, okay, it's now totally in perspective, bro. Whether it's a plane crash, car wreck, or supernova, capturing images of sudden catastrophic events is extremely difficult, <sighs> but tremendously helpful in understanding root cause. Okay, so like, capturing an image of why a car wreck or a plane crash is extremely difficult. 
but it's helpful. So we need more people to crash on camera to help out scientists figure out why cars crash and planes crash. And you know what's funny? It's like, why do those two cars crash? It's usually because one of them was a total dumbass and wasn't paying attention or was just driving like a fool with no respect for physics. I and mean, heck, they can't even figure out where planes go when they crash, which is weird. I thought they had black boxes or something. But I guess when the CubeSat went online, it stopped always cooperating. Ooh, look over here. Look over here. They got a diagram. Diagram right here. Kick ass, man. Um, still waiting on the photograph. That would probably be important, I think, maybe. Just as widespread deployment of mobile cameras has made forensic videos more common, the steady gaze of Kepler allowed astronomers to see, at last, a supernova shockwave as it reached the surface of a star. The shock breakout itself lasts only about 20 minutes. So catching the flash of energy is an investigative milestone for astronomers. Wait, first of all, how have we determined that a sh stellar shock breakout only lasts about 20 minutes? Is it kind of like the dress? Remember when that story broke out across the world? Like, is the dress blue? Is the dress white? I was like, I don't know. I don't care. Because I can't think of anything less interesting than a dress without a woman in it. And you could say, because the dress without a woman isn't alive or interesting. But a woman without a dress is definitely alive and definitely interesting. Wait, it's probably not in the right word. I better stop there before I have a supernova in my pants. Wait, that was immature. Allow me to retract that. I would hate to lessen my science reputation. This is a NASA article, so that means this is some serious shit. In order to see something that happens on time scales of minutes, like a stellar shock breakout, you want to have a camera continuously monitoring the sky. You don't know when a supernova is going to go off, a giant mothership is going to pass by, or our slavers are going to return to collect their gold, oil, and women. And Kepler's vigilance allowed us to be a witness as the explosion began, a zillion miles away. Supernovae like these, known as Type 2, known as Type 1, 1, begin when the internal furnace of a star runs out of nuclear fuel, causing its core to collapse as gravity takes over. Maybe there's a part of the universe where the stars run on green energy. It's possible. And maybe we just can't see it because it's on a higher plane. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The two supernovae matched up well with mathematical models of Type 2 explosions, reinforcing existing theories. Is it just me or is a lot of times science likes to just reinforce existing theories? Sometimes that screws up good science, I would think. But they also revealed what could turn out to be an unexpected variety in the individual details of these cataclysmic stellar events. While both explosions delivered a similar energetic punch, no shock breakout was seen in the smaller of the supergiants. What? So the theory was wrong. Sweet. Scientists think that this is likely due to the smaller star being surrounded by gas, perhaps enough to mask the shock wave when it reached the star's surface. Wait, so let me get this straight. So like the star poured gas all around itself and then lit the gas and then the whole solar system exploded? That's some crazy science, bro. Some crazy daring science. And you guys all gathered this from one photograph you won't even show us. Like, I'm hoping when I get to the end of this article, and I haven't looked because I like to record these as I read them so it's new to me and you. And if it's interesting enough, I can go back and more educatedly look at it. But, um, you know, I haven't looked at the bottom of the article. Well, I might as well do that now. But I don't think they're going to show us a photo. I mean, we got this YouTube video. People make fun of YouTube, but it's like nasty YouTube. Don't believe it, it's on YouTube. So I guess this is an explosion without the shockwave. Can you show us like 10 photos of the star before it exploded? And then like 100 photos of the star after it exploded or as it is exploding. Why is Alex Jones crying? Okay, so there's the brilliant flash of an exploding star's shockwave that astronomers called the shock breakout is illustrated in the video animation. All right, so I'm going to contact Michelle Johnson, see if I can get a photograph. Um, you know, maybe even an interview. I wonder if NASA let me come out there and interview. Where's the photo? Whoa, did you see that? Just flipped that. NASA's K2 finds dead star vaporizing a mini planet. Maybe that's gonna happen to us? Okay. So then why are you guys being such dicks? You know? Like, why are you torturing? If everybody's about to die in some way, why would you torture the people? There ain't no photo, man. Like, how the hell can you just... How do you guys get away with this? I don't know. Like, whoever's running Hogwarts now, there needs to be a change. And I know it's probably the Nebraska Navy, but whatever. That is the puzzle of these results, is how people take it seriously. Without real photographs, said Garnich. You look at two supernovae and see two different things. That's maximum diversity. No, I don't think it is. Understanding the physics of these violent events allows scientists to better understand how the seeds of chemical complexity and the life itself have been scattered in space and time. No, cat! Cat walked on the screen. Crap. See, cats are like the universe. Cat's saying wrap it up. Man, when the cat tells me to wrap it up, I do. 
Holy crap, cat. How did you get down so fast? The cat is way better at the computer than I am. Okay, so, yeah, whatever, man. Stories make me mad. Peace out. God bless everyone. I'm having a bad day, and I'm sad, and I'm in a bad mood. Story, you were supposed to be fun, and you were not fun. You let me down, exploding star story. I just wanted you to know.